Hi, it's Jeff. And Denise from MouseSteps.com. And this is episode number 205. 205. Of Mouse Steps Weekly. Sponsored by MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. We're going to be not only talking about Halloween this week, but Christmas. And this is the time to start booking your Christmas vacation if you haven't already. And definitely with MEI is the, is the way to do it. Plus, they're at Universal this week. They've been over at uh, Universal's Royal Pacific, the Lowe's Royal Pacific mm-hmm, Hotel. Mm-hmm. And so they can answer probably pretty much anything about Universal Studios and the resorts over there as well and and book that. Highly recommended. Also, the AllEars.net weekly newsletter. It's read by over 140,000 subscribers weekly and they offer restaurant and resort reviews as well as tips, cruise line, DVC info, and much more. And this week, Jim Corcus, historian Jim Corcus, uh, is giving out information about Thanksgiving traditions at uh, Walt Disney World and actually Disneyland as well. So check below in the show notes for everything you need to subscribe. Highly recommended. And did we mention it is free? So this week we're going to the starting of the Magic Kingdom. Two holidays are colliding. We start with Halloween and actually you can see Christmas uh, is forming there with the Mickey Mouse as well. And we really only had one day reprieve between the two holidays. It was like Halloween day, and then I think November 2nd is when the castle lighting was. That was the first was. castle lighting, yes. <laughs> so we're going to see that later on in the show. It was nuts. But for now, it is still Halloween. We have lots to talk about as far as Halloween. But first, we're going to look. Tomorrowland had a few changes at the Magic Kingdom since we were there. The first is the painting of the rocks. Very exciting. The painting of the rocks and there outside was, of Tomorrowland. There was my rose garden. I still don't know what happened with it. It's like a little forest. But... Uh, Fantasyland Forest. That's it. Like Even they though almost it's, did the yes, Fantasyland Forest. But here are the they painted the rocks. I don't I don't know why they painted the rocks, but uh, they're blue. Yes, they're very <laughs> blue with a little of purple in there as well. Jeff's like, you need pictures. I'm like, I don't know why I need pictures of that. Well, it's a, it's a change. It's it is something a change. different. I don't understand the concept of it though. But uh, it is purple rocks. There's well, it's partly purple. Purple's my favorite color, but they've added blue to it. So. This is what the entrance to Tomorrowland looks like now. Doesn't it look like it would be an undercoating of some sort to paint it the actual color of these rocks? I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. We're also going to take a look at the uh, all new sign from the Carousel of Progress. I do like this. I think this is a classy, nice looking uh, new addition, new sign. I like the old one, but I like this one too. I mean, the the uh, Carousel of Progress opened at the Magic Kingdom in 1975, and it was previously at Disneyland. And uh, in the I World's think it's Fair nice. too, the 64, 65 World's Fair. This Carousel of Progress really gets That's around. Right. Literally, it gets around. it gets around. And you'll notice the new paint job as well on the inside. I and I like the I like the paint job. I think it looks nice. Now I just think they need to stop talking about laser discs inside. <laughs> I hope they redo that last scene. Wouldn't it be scene. great to see the last scene fully updated? I would love that. I mean, I would totally love that. So I think they talk about virtual reality. Isn't that what it is? The grandma is playing a virtual reality yeah, and, game but the thing is, from the like, 90s. Now there is more virtual reality, so it's sort of coming back. Speaking of reality, though, now we're jumping ahead. We're going to see the Muppets, this new edition of the Muppets uh, American History. And I just want to say I love this. This is one of my favorite new additions uh, to, well, to any of the parks right now. And I always have, like, well, Jeff will sing it because I say Muppets are better than Star Wars. Muppets are better than Star Wars. <laughs> you sing it very well, by the way. I don't sing. I don't sing at all. I sound terrible. So enough of this foolishness. Why don't you tell us the real name of the new uh, shows? Well, it's called The Muppets Present Great Moments in American History. It debuted on October 2nd. We were away at the time, so it took us a little bit longer to get there. Um, there is a, a Declaration of Independence version, and that is hosted by James J.J. Jefferson, but he does not host the other one, which is a Paul Revere version. And when we did it, we uh, I chose a time where they'd be back to back within about 10 minutes, uh, one finished and then 10 minutes later, the next started. Right. And Sam Eagle only makes the appearance above the Hall of Presidents for this first version, uh, not the Paul Revere version. But he is in the other. Correct. He, is in he the comes other out window. of the windows, the, the main windows uh, in the other one. So it's a little different. And I just want to mention, sometimes there's like an hour or more difference between the two shows. So if you check the schedule, when we did it, it was like 1130, maybe 1130, 1215 or so uh, in that uh, time period. Um, But Miss Piggy 
always wants to be part of it, even though it was like the founding fathers. <laughs> and she's like, well, I, but I want to be in the show. And Kermit keeps telling her she can't be. But as you can see, she's totally in the show. We were also told that there will be more of these little shows coming uh, down the pike. And I, uh, I look forward to that. Well, if they do it, and I only heard it from one cast member, it would be cool. It's kind of like the seasonal segments uh, in Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair. So great to see, as I said before, so great to see the Muppets with the Muppet Mobile Lab at Epcot making a return since night or was it 2007 so that's a long time mm -hmm. and uh, and having this brand new thing so it's so nice to see the muppets and there's even muppet merchandise of mm -hmm. course and then there's also going to be pizza rizzo coming to disney's hollywood studios it looks like it will be the same food as a buzz lightyear uh pizza planet had but uh hopefully it'll at least be really well themed do we remember was it something like november 7th? no no it's november 18th, 18th is the uh is the date that they are saying it will open so you never know if it might open a little earlier right there will be a possible soft, soft opening whatever and it, i guess it's going to be a personal pizzas right similar like to the, like, uh, the it, right it pizza looks planet. exactly like pizza uh pizza planet food too bad they couldn't have uh maybe got via Napoli. To, that to, what I would have liked. That, or Blaze Pizza. Like if they oh, did Blaze Pizza, that would that have been That would have been awesome. spectacular as well. <laughs> but anyway. And here. there's a good Ameri a great American right there, Sam Eagle. And we've seen that shirt over at uh, the American Adventure. So now we're taking a look at Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, currently under refurbishment. You know, I think it would be so cool if... Uh, we get the new Disneyland exploding scene, and I know that's going into Disneyland Paris very soon as well. Right. Well, that, that has been known for Disneyland Paris for a long time. That's about to open as well, and I can't wait to see it next year. And they also reopen this on November 18th, same day as Pizza Rizzo, so you can put in, do both in one day. Well, the real reason it's closed, there's this mountain goat infestation, apparently, from uh, reading that uh, Well, that little apparently sign. they know by November 18th that it Those will be Those goats will be out of there. <laughs> Got to get rid of the goats. I should, Just like Disneyland, they got rid of the goats. So oh, you have to get rid say, of the goats. <laughs> don't say that. I love the Disneyland goats. Anyway, time will tell, and uh, we'll cross our fingers. Maybe we'll get a really, really cool uh, update. But no, nothing has been announced or anything like that we should mention it's just my own Jeff uh, likes to my think own about high all hopes. kinds high of hopes. I don't have high hopes so let's uh, <laughs> let's wave goodbye to Halloween at the Magic Kingdom next time we go there it will be Christmas later on in the show Halloween though this is Halloween Eve at Fort Wilderness one of our favorite things the Fort Wilderness Halloween golf cart parade and this is usually held on Halloween day and so many things were changed for uh, Disney's Fort Wilderness this year. I mean, they had almost all the components. They were just kind of uh, changed around. And here comes probably my favorite golf cart of the parade this year. It is the the Haunted Mansion float. I thought, and you know what? I wasn't even taking pictures at first because I'm like, oh, well, I don't know what that is. And then you turn around. And it's like, oh, my God. That's right. Look. That one kind of surprises that was, you. That was, uh, that was awesome. I believe that is a Walking Dead reference right there. I don't know anything about the Walking Dead. I don't. I don't watch it. Finding Dory. So many great floats. So much creativity. And we should mention, all these are done by the campers. This is not Disney putting this together, except, obviously, Chip and Dale are, are Disney characters. Well, but... they, they kind of set it up, and this is what time it's going to be at. And then... Uh, and this is this I mean, is a really that's good a, one pretty too. amazing these people create these uh floats on their own so and we've talked to guests who took months like i remember there was this really great alice in wonderland table one and they took like three months to put that together i love this one this is another great float right there and we've been posting these online for about seven years now this is a tradition for us and uh, I was glad we were able to make it again this year. Somehow the theme of this year's golf cart parade was Ghostbusters. I never would have guessed. I wouldn't say theme, but the, I was looking for maybe a Zootopia or, you know, Pete's Dragon. But instead there was like three or four uh, Ghostbusters. But they're, they're all the classic. They're all the classic <laughs> Ghostbusters. You don't see the uh, the new Ghostbusters, which we're currently watching right now. And, we're, and actually that's a pretty good movie. I'm enjoying it. And also I really like this cart. It has uh, kind of a Mickey Mouse through the years uh, theme. We're going to link to your article with photos because with the photos you can really see a lot of the details that these carts have. And river there's Country. a River Country one and that was one of my favorites. Mine too. That was probably uh, my second favorite. I really love that. Maybe even my first. That's a great one. And you had Mickey and Minnie kind of going down that those slides which was pretty awesome and then uh, there were a number of Nightmare Before Christmas cards, probably about the same number as the Ghostbuster cards. The Candy Bandits, very creative, very because cre they they actually have pictures of all the girls there on the cards. Mm -hmm. And, here's and Pat, 
Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Yep. And Mrs. Pac-Man as well. And that was a, a game I really enjoyed in the 80s. So That's right. We're was, showing our age. It was really, you know, it's always really fun to see. The, every year is completely different. So completely different cards. There's a few that are in it pretty much every year, but that's it. This is perfect. It's the wrong holiday Christmas. But you know what? It really wasn't the wrong holiday because a day, like Oops, the next day holiday. was Magic it's Kingdom. A, actually, that's true. Two <laughs> days later, Christmas. it was fully uh, Christmas. And we're going to see that, of course, later on. And you met this guy on the beach later on. Yeah, you had uh, Michael Myers there. <laughs> and I'm, yeah, I did meet him. <laughs> we have and a quite too. funny picture with you and him and the axe there. <laughs> so uh, anyway. That was interesting. And there's, uh, you had... Uh, Chip at the end, and Dale had been at the beginning. And Dale's hat wouldn't fit underneath the cart, so he had to have it being held. Here they are, though, later on. We didn't even know they were doing a meet and greet. We were eating our chicken that we always get on Halloween Eve, and there they were. Now, Trails Indigo, I'm just going to mention, uh, we always enjoy going there. So, uh, But then all of a sudden, Chip and Dale were outside, and we didn't know they were meeting. Normally, they meet on this night at the uh, at the campfire, but they weren't having a campfire. They canceled the campfire to have the uh, beach party. Right, and you still had the meet and greet here, which was not in the schedule. And there's something else that wasn't in the schedule that uh, is part of our yearly tradition that we didn't know would be here. And I know what you're talking about. We'll be seeing that very soon. But first, we're going to look at the uh, pumpkin decorating contest. One of my favorite ones coming up is uh, Marshmallow Marsh. Do you remember that? I do not remember it, but... Uh, was that before your Fort Wilderness time, I, You perhaps? know what? I think so. What, what year was the Marshmallow Marsh? I believe it ended in the late 80s, but it was a great little thing that uh, they used to do at Fort Wilderness. Well, my family didn't come over to Fort Wilderness too much. So anyway, here are the pumpkins. There's uh, a mini and Mickey some some pumpkins. There's all kinds of different ones. And there's that Mickey and Minnie I just mentioned. We have Goofy. Um, there's a Cinderella coach. I see some Jack Skellington. There's smashing pumpkins right there, which is quite creative. So I didn't uh, even get that. Yeah, so interesting. Good stuff. All done by campers. Again, just like the Fort Wilderness Golf Cart Parade. Here comes that surprise we were talking about. Sleepy Hollow. I see the Headless Horseman. Now, the Headless Horseman is usually part of the campfire program, and he usually comes out for like, it seems like 30 to 60 seconds, very fast. Only on Halloween Eve, once right. a year. And instead, uh, he was unscheduled, and he was out here for 15 to 20 minutes. So, you know, guests could see him for much longer, which was actually quite nice. I had no idea. I fully expected to not see the Headless Horseman this time. We were eating our chicken that we mentioned earlier, and we saw <laughs> a horseman come out in the daylight, and that kind of gave me the idea, well, maybe we should linger around and perhaps see the horseman. And what do you know? He did come out. Well, you actually kind of chased after him, tried to get I did. to him. I did indeed <laughs> chase after him, but then he disappeared. So I figured it could be for a private function. Like, who knew that uh, everybody was going to get this chance? So I, I did not know that this was going to happen. Well, it was pretty awesome. I really enjoy seeing the Headless Horseman. We always enjoy... Um, coming over to Fort Wilderness. This has been a long-standing tradition of ours. And here is one of our favorite uh, campsites. We love the decorated campsites every Halloween. This is Halloween Eve, though. And this pirate site has uh, been there previous years, making a return this year. And it is one of my favorites of all time. Fantastic. And this is um, the Kunkels. We have met them before. And they do really a superb job. I like the, you know, the Mickey spider web. You have all sorts of, like, it's a big pirate ship, and then you have all sorts of other things going on here. Every year, Fort Wilderness has a contest for best decorated site and spookiest site and all kinds of disney theme site. And I believe this particular setup has won twice in the past. So uh, kudos to them. Great job. Right. And I think they didn't enter this year is what they said so that somebody else, you know, can have a chance to win. So I thought that was really nice. Here's another fantastic site. I love all these little pumpkins with the different colors in them. Well, look at Inside Out. I miss this. I don't know how I miss that and at look at pac-man in the back do you not see the pac -Man? i totally missed it i so totally missed wonderful. it i think i was at a different site well at least you get to see it now yes but i kind of wish i had seen you know there were other sites that we saw like when we we're on a golf cart um with some friends and it was like well hopefully the next day we can come back to them but we didn't come back on halloween on Halloween Day. Well, Halloween Day, we did not expect this pleasant surprise. A friend called us and they said, 
go to Saratoga Springs. We didn't ask questions. We just headed over there and it was a special meet and greet with Oogie Boogie. And we had planned to go to a few resorts, but we hadn't planned to go to Saratoga Springs. And it wasn't only Oogie Boogie. You could go and see Jack and Sally. Uh, and it, they swapped on and off every half hour for about three hours. What was so nice, though, is they allowed people that really wanted to see Oogie Boogie to step aside and let all the Jack and Sally fans go by. And uh, you were able to see Oogie Boogie. It wasn't a crazy long line. Everybody was uh, in a good spirits mm-hmm. and respectful. Just kudos. I got to tell you. So much respect for everybody there at Saratoga Springs. I've never seen a meet and greet handled so well. It was just wonderful. You know, it was very dark in there and we couldn't get a good picture. You couldn't focus uh, on Oogie Boogie with your camera. They even let us go back and take pictures. Uh, it was just, you, they couldn't have been You nicer. got it set on the manual and everything. It was, it was a very dark meet and greet, but... It was really, um, it was really a lot of fun. And did I mention they even had cupcakes after meeting Oogie Boogie on the way out? Make your own cupcakes with gummy worms and all these other and things. And little bag, they had these little things called bags of blood with that were like sugar. So I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it didn't look uh, very appetizing, <laughs> but it actually was uh, pretty good. So anyway, our Halloween fun continued. Here we are at Disney's Old Key West with Mickey in an outfit I have never seen before. Now somebody told us it was a uh, Hong. Kong Hong costume. I looked up online and it does uh, look similar to what he has worn in Hong Kong before. And I thought that was, it was really fun to see the different uh, costumes. And I think there had been other characters there that morning, not uh, Mickey and as you can see Donald here too. Right. I know Chip and Dale were there and they had the same style costume, the same purple-ish costume. So uh, I think it is from Hong Kong, as you said. I really liked it. Donald was super fun. I always have a good time uh, with him. And I, I just enjoyed that we saw costumes, uh, there he is, um, costumes that we had never seen before. And it's so much fun. You know, I highly recommend going to the resorts because you don't know what you're getting. It's like Christmas morning. You know, you have no idea what's going to be inside the package when you pull up to the resorts, unless you cheat and you look on Twitter. I totally looked on Twitter. I totally wanted to know who was going to be where. But sometimes when you got there, it wasn't the advertised character. As an example, Pluto here was on Twitter. It showed Goofy as a pirate and all of a sudden you get there and it is uh, it is Pluto because they alternate. Actually, Goofy, uh, I could not find any information, but when you arrived, they told you that Goofy had been there. Showed and there, me a picture. And there had been no other, uh, they said no other characters, but when I went back there, all of a sudden I saw Pluto and you had already gotten back to the car. Right, so you never know. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Lewis, oh boy, I always have so much fun with Lewis. Of course, we had to ask him where his trumpet is and he, he didn't remember. He must have left it in the back, he said. But anyway, always, always enjoy meeting Lewis the alligator. And I just want to mention that all of these characters are on a character montage video um, that Jeff put together for the different resorts, including Chippendale and Lewis. And uh, we're going to be seeing also, uh, well, Pluto and uh, the upcoming Mickey and Goofy. And I even we did threw find in Goofy. Jack and Sally, too, to make it uh, complete. Here is Mickey again. Mickey has quickly changed outfits and raced over to Disney's Port Orleans Resort. And that is a different outfit also than I have ever seen him in. This is Disney's Port Orleans Riverside. We had been over at Port Orleans French Quarter, and we left French Quarter to go to Disney's Art of Animation Resort before heading back here. Yes, they had a golf cart parade, a very short golf cart parade which i didn't deem um you, necessary to put on the uh, it was the a show. first one and it you know we already had the fort wilderness one um but it was it was a fun first one for them and here we have goofy in the same similar style as uh, mickey just was out in and again this is an outfit i have never seen we have been around and done this character stuff for a long time so it was nice to come out this evening and see all new outfits and some characters. I had never met Oogie Boogie before, so uh, it was a very successful Halloween night for me. It was it was fun. We had some dinner here, and um, and we're going to be leaving here to go to Christmas. Christmas <laughs> time! So it's only two days later, and this is the Magic Kingdom. It is now November 2nd. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Was, it is Christmas time. I was not ready. Like, to me, one day in between is not, is not quite enough. I... 
I would have rather had till about the 6th just to take a few days. Now notice from this view there's no Christmas tree. That had changed the very next day and last night when we were there the Christmas tree was fully up and you will be seeing that uh, soon. But this was the one day that the park was like this uh, treeless. I Well I was amazed. You know it's amazing how quickly they can get this mostly done when they want to changing it from Halloween to Christmas. So this was the debut of the Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair Christmas finale. And I really like the fact that they have seasonal finales. We had the summer, the normal edition to kick it off. We had the autumn edition with has that awesome music that we like from, from Disneyland, Disneyland Paris. Paris. Mm -hmm. And now we have the Christmas version. So what did you think? You know, I like that they do uh, the se I like the seasonal aspect to it that they're, you know, they put in a little extra money to to offer that. And I, I think there was a little something from uh, from not just uh, not I don't want to say not so scary. Mickey's Very Merry Christmas, Christmas Parade. Parade. Right. Yes, there was a little bit of music uh, from that, which I enjoyed. And I wish it would be fun if like Rapunzel and Flynn Rider came out in holiday outfits. Or, or Anna and Elsa. Or, or Olaf. Anna, all of you them. You can dress them all up in Christmas attire. But it's still nice. I mean, you get to see the classic characters in new outfits, new Christmas attire, like Goofy there mm -hmm. and Daisy and Donald. And you're about to see uh, Mickey and Minnie in a minute. So I, you know, I just enjoy the show. I think the first time I'd seen it, I thought, well, I'm not sure if I love the show, but it's really grown on me. And I know I've said that before. And uh, and I enjoy that they do put the, the effort into having uh, an extra finale at the end. Right. Absolutely. Oh, here come Mickey and Minnie. And should we mention that they have a different look to Mickey and Minnie, by the way, not the traditional Mickey and Minnie face that we've been used to all these years? Well, I mean, the once Shanghai opened, there was the new Mickey and Minnie faces. And uh, since the beginning, since day one of Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair, they've had these uh, the, the Shanghai look to them is what I'll say. Although at this point, this will be the traditional uh, face. We're seeing it more and more around all of the parks. And the explanation I'm getting is Mickey looks more like he does in Disney Junior, which uh, the kids can identify with a little bit more. So that's the whole idea of going to that new uh, new look. Anyway, we're going to jump ahead. It is Christmas time, as we said before. Time for the first castle lighting. The official name is the Frozen Holiday Wish. And this is the 10th year for the castle lighting. It started in 2007, and I have been there for every single one of uh, really the kickoff. Too. For all of those, and uh, it, for seven of those years, it was Cinderella's. Well, it was her wish, although it was really the fairy godmother's wish. Right, and she I kind think of... <laughs> Cinderella got pushed into that wish. <laughs> and now you have Elsa and uh, with Kristoff and and Anna here. Plus, we'll see Olaf. And uh, Elsa's like, no, I, you know, I want to be respectful to the to the occupants of the castle. But then it's like. Okay, <laughs> well, I will I think, light it. <laughs> I think she got uh, peer pressure. I think she got kind of pushed <laughs> into it again from uh, Anna there and with the help of Kristoff and Olaf. So, uh, you know, she, she she was pushed into it, okay. if you ask me. Now you could have Cinderella and Elsa. Maybe just they should be doing it. But anyway, the castle lighting is always um, one of my favorite things. I think, again, it was a little earlier than uh, November 2nd. It was really early. I was still thinking about Halloween um, but it's still such a beautiful, a beautiful display. Yeah, it was. It, it is a beautiful display, and it is the first time I think it's ever been that early. I don't ever recall the castle lighting itself being November second. There I have been remember. parties. There have been Halloween parties on November first no in Halloween. previous years. Yes. Oh really? November oh, that, I for, totally forgot about that. Yeah. I forgot that they. Some years they will have them if it falls on a weekend or something on the first of November. Well, so. you had the Halloween Horror Nights over at Universal. Last still... night was the last one. <laughs> still going yeah and we're recording this show on the 5th of november so she's talking about the 4th anyway this is a great great show i do enjoy it elsa is being has been talked into lighting the castle and here she goes she's going to illuminate it for the first time this year and i was thinking wouldn't it be interesting if like cinderella and the fairy godmother came out a couple hours later and like what happened to our castle? We were going to light it, you <laughs> yes, know? Yes, <laughs> I was saying that myself. You could have two shows. You can have this one and then Cinderella coming out later saying, what is this? <laughs> what's this? Yes, Just what's like this? Jack Skellington. What's this? Yes, well, you can bring Jack. Now, that would be pretty awesome, having Jack Skellington involved. Well, I'm not... <laughs> Good Cinderella. <laughs> yes. Cinderella, Jack Skellington, <laughs> Oogie Boogie perhaps when the holidays whole, collide. Kind of changing the whole uh, theme of the castle there. But anyway... You can see it's, I believe it's about 200,000 uh, lights on Cinderella Castle, probably more now that the turrets are also 
uh, part of it. You know, the turrets came in last year oh, where yeah, they added those, right. and so many more lights on the on those too. And I think we're about to see that view coming up. It is just so beautiful. You know that it never gets old, even though it's ten years, as you said earlier, ten years and of November, Castle Lightning. And even though it's November second, and right. two days after Halloween fully ended. But that view does not get old for me, even though it's only been well, I guess it's only been two years for that particular view. But. Oh well, this is the second year I think for the turrets. So here we are back again at the Magic Kingdom. This was just last night. You can see the tree is fully up, which is very nice because for for many years, the tree didn't appear until well into December. Because of the Christmas parade taping. And there's um, not too many decorations that are new this year, but I noticed Candy Cane Lane looked a little different, so I think they uh, plussed that a little bit. Nice. And that's about uh, that's about all I remember noticing. Yeah, the tree looks pretty much the same as the it's been popcorn. in uh, previous years. And you can see up ahead, uh, Main Street here is fully ready for the Christmas time holidays. They have all the decorations in place there, so I think that looks pretty good. And we're here for the Once Upon a Time. Uh, this is a, a projection mapping show. It started pouring just a few minutes, uh, really, before the show and began. And when we say pouring, I mean buckets well, and I buckets. Well, I monsoon. It was, <laughs> it was a like, monsoon <laughs> of rain. So, uh, you know, we, we, we tried to take cover. Uh, we were both completely soaked. A lot of people left, but all of a sudden it, it stopped. So that was kind of nice, even though there's like rivers of water going down Main Street from just really maybe a 10 minute or less rainfall. So as soon as the rain stopped, I put the camera up on the tripod and recorded the, the rest of the show. So I do have highlights lights luckily and we're looking at it now this is the frozen segment uh this show is actually from tokyo there's a longer version uh, what did you say about 18 I, about or 19 eight, minutes it's about 18 minutes this is about 14 minutes so um i believe a tangled version is not here and there's like one other segment that i think is not part of it um and you notice the turrets are uh not being used we don't know if that will change at, at some point right perhaps they don't have that ready yet i know in the tokyo version the turrets you can sort of see them in the dark there they are part of the show so you have characters interacting with other characters from the turret to the main castle i will say that the disney parks blog said something along the lines that it's inspired by mm -hmm. the tokyo version but i think it is kind of the tokyo version but without you know without some of the aspects of it but i didn't overall... see lasers here in florida and they had some really cool lasers i just watched a youtube video from uh, tokyo but i still i have to say this is tremendous i mean the the quality of this show is is amazing in person as well as uh, even the video it looks pretty good so this replaced celebrate the magic celebrate the magic ended a what a night or two ago and uh, and that has been there for about four years and prior to that it was the magic the memories and you which was my favorite incarnation of the different uh, projection shows um, here at the magic kingdom that was the first one and that one debuted in 2011 and we saw that on opening night and this uh, frozen segment it's similar to what we saw in celebrate the magic but it's certainly a lot more fleshed out and I think an additional song as well. Well, the the fans, I mean, people were singing along. You, it was it was really nice to see people still into love it. Right, and, and my favorite part, of course, was the Beauty and the Beast. I'm a huge Beauty and the Beast fan, and uh, and I just love this. It's beautiful. It's uh, it's so uh, so well done. Now, I, you know, I've been asked already for my opinion um, on the show, but I was behind the camera the whole time and hoping not to get you know soaked with another rain, you know, rain rain and. Uh, so that's a beautiful segment, but you know I need to see it be right. We need to fully watch it without cameras and a, 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 a without rain. But this is interesting. You are actually going to see Gaston sort of fall to his demise there. So you don't usually see such a thing uh, on a Disney show, and yet we still see him around the parks and dancing, he dan dancing at Disney did. Paris. <laughs> so here is pretty much a montage of the whole show. This is now the finale. So everything you see here, like the Winnie the Pooh segment, things that I only saw in the rain, you're able to kind of get a little bit, uh, a little teaser on of, of Well, this. It, it sort of uh, takes them all and, and brings them back. So you get to see it like the, there's a Peter Pan segment. So then um, you see that. And we saw also um, in the Tokyo version online on those turrets. Right. So it's interesting. I, I should say you can't see this, but Denise's hands are moving a mile a minute. So she really is getting into talking about this show here. I don't normally see Even the Even though I feel like motion. I didn't really totally watch it yet. And yeah. this is, um, that's like the Alice in Wonderland Which segment. was great, yes. by the way. We ended up putting the Beauty and the Beast and finale segment up. So we will link to that on the show notes. So you can actually hear the show as well as watch it, uh, aside from our uh, ramblings. But anyway, great show. I did like the show. 
I watched the Tokyo show, so it, to me it's not quite as good as that, but it's, uh, it's still a nice replacement for Celebrate the Magic. Well, it's very similar, and I also want to say that the lighting package on the castle, on Cinderella Castle, to me the, this year looks as good or better than, really better than ever as far as the colors. So that's something that I really enjoyed this year as well. Here's another beautiful view looking down Main Street, USA. Merry Christmas, everybody. We're going to have a, the two Christmas, Christmas parties coming, coming up. up this week. Lots of uh, big doings. So uh, And happy holidays. And happy, ho happy holidays. <laughs> anyway, we want to thank our sponsors, MEI Travel, Mouse Fan Travel, the best in the business. Yes, and uh, definitely check them out. You can sign up for a newsletter from them as well. And speaking of newsletters, the allears.net weekly newsletter, more than just news though tons and tons of great information articles all sorts of goodness. tons tons it's definitely worth reading every week so anyway thanks everyone for listening have a great week and we will see you all next week have a great week